So about a year ago, I switched from an iPhone to this $250 Android phone, the OnePlus Nord CE 5G. And well, yeah, let's talk about how I'm doing now physically, but also mentally, because it must have been a traumatic experience, right? <laughs> You know what I've always been asking myself? Why do people buy super expensive phones? Yeah, you there, with the iPhone 14 Pro Plus Max Ultra Gold Edition. Why did you buy that phone? I'm really curious. And look, you can do with your money whatever you want, of course. And I'm not trying to stop you from buying iPhones. I'm not judging you either. I mean, I was buying iPhones myself until not too long ago, but I've been using this $250 Android phone now for a year, and I've been reflecting a little bit trying to find out why I was buying iPhones. And honestly, I have no idea. I don't know why, because this thing is great. Maybe there's one thing that might ruin the great experience I've had so far, but we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Maybe first let's talk about hardware, because that's what reviewers do, right? Now, keep in mind, I'm not a phone reviewer. This is not a phone review. It will more likely turn into a rant by the end of the video. People who watch my channel, you know. So yeah, buckle up. Sometimes I hear people say that they need, not want, need a super fast and powerful phone. Even though iPhones are not the most powerful phones on the market, I think, but still more powerful than this for sure. But then all they do is scroll on Instagram, scroll on Twitter, maybe even tweet every now and then, whoa. Uh, use WhatsApp, browse the internet, use the camera every now and then probably. But that's basically it. And I can't imagine the latest iPhone doing all that so much better than this. I mean, maybe it'll feel a tiny bit snappier and smoother, but do you really wanna pay four or five times more for a tiny bit more snappiness? I don't know. I think it's all psychological, but I could be wrong here. So do let me know in the comments, what's your experience? If you have a thousand dollar iPhone or any other brand, what can you do with that thousand dollar phone that you can't do with a cheaper phone? Or what is it that makes the experience so horrible that you really wanna pay five times more for a phone? I'm, I'm just genuinely curious. No judging, it's just curiosity. Because I, I don't know why I was buying iPhones. It's just because it had a little Apple, that's it. Or, you know, maybe I'm not using my phone intensively enough, but I don't feel like I need a more powerful phone than this, $250. Everything feels smooth and snappy enough for me. And I'm actually 100% convinced that most people who buy a $1,000 phone don't need a $1,000 phone. They just want one, you know? They can afford it, and so why not? Even though this would be perfectly fine. But if they wanna pay four or five times more for maybe one and a half times more snappiness, well, yeah, okay, hey. Who am I to tell them that they're wrong? And maybe for some people also, status is important. You know, the good old, I have a lot of money and I wanna show it. Or, I don't have a lot of money, but I want you to think I have a lot of money. That could also be a reason, of course. Or, I'm super rich, but I don't know anything about technology, so I'll just buy the most expensive thing and it'll be good. Yeah. I, I can make up more of these, but those are all valid reasons, of course. I'm not gonna tell those people that they're wrong. I just wanna rant about it. Have I started already? I think I have, but yeah, I'm not like the status symbol kind of guy. So there you go. Anyway, next is, I'm gonna try to talk about the phone a little bit more. Next is user experience, Android versus iOS. So some people say they could never do it, switch from iPhone to Android or vice versa, because they'll die. They, they absolutely can't get used to the cheaper look and feel of a phone like this or the, the, the uh, operating system, and they'll just die. Even people who've never even tried using another phone. But you know what? I've never had any problems switching from iPhone to Android. It took me a few weeks to get used to it, you know, where everything is but now I love it. Now, that being said, I also wouldn't mind switching back either. Maybe I'm just more flexible than most people. I don't know, it's possible. But I don't feel like one is so much better than the other. I mean, iOS does some things really good and Android does some things really good. So yeah, I mean, again, I think it's all 
up here, that people create problems that aren't actually there. Okay, and then the camera. I'm a photographer, I'm a videographer, cameras, everything that has to do with cameras, it's my life. And the camera on this thing, not so great. But the thing is, I've always wondered, why do people need the absolute best camera on their phone if all they do is just take some snapshots of whatever, selfies? Like, does anyone use a smartphone or an iPhone for a professional video or photo shoot? I mean, maybe there are people like that? I don't know. If a professional content creator uses his phone to make a little story on Instagram, is that professional like use of a phone? I don't know. And even then, would, would the most expensive iPhone be, would it be so much of a difference compared to something cheaper? Half price maybe? I've always wondered. But I have to be honest here, I don't take a lot of photos with my phone, I don't shoot a lot of video with my phone, and when I do take photos, you know, with my editing skills and my knowledge about exposure lighting, I can make this look good. But I can imagine that some people maybe want great photos straight out of camera. They don't want to, to be bothered with editing and all that stuff. But does it have to be a thousand dollar iPhone? I mean, Joanna has a Pixel, what is it? A Pixel 5a? And that thing takes great photos. A lot better than this and I would say better than an iPhone. I don't know, I, 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 have, I haven't tested the, the latest iPhone, so I have no idea, but possibly. And you know, I think YouTube is also part of the problem here. I mean, I shouldn't call it a problem, it's not a problem, but you know, phone reviewers, they always review a phone not based on how an average user uses a phone daily. Did that sentence make sense? Wow. I don't know. I hope so. I'm not gonna do it again. But you know what I mean? And then, of course, we get brainwashed into thinking that we need the absolute best phone. All those benchmarks and graphs where you can see all the phones lined up and the best one at the top. I mean, does it really matter if the phone you have, if it's at spot number one or number three or even four or five? I don't know. I don't think so. I've really started my rant now. I. <clears throat> okay, let's just move on to the before last point, or the last point. Yeah, the last one. Okay, look, one thing I'll give Apple and iPhones, well, at least the, the last one I had, is that after five years of using the same iPhone, it still felt great. The battery was still at around 85% of the original capacity, everything still felt smooth and it didn't crash a lot or anything. So you can definitely use an iPhone for years. No iPhone user does that, they buy a new iPhone every year, but they could if they really tried. And this thing, I don't know, right now it feels great. The battery is superb, it charges fast, it feels smooth and snappy, uh, but I don't know what that's gonna be in three, four years. Maybe I'll have to buy a new phone now in two years. But even then, if I would have to buy a new phone every, a new $250 phone every two and a half years, I'm still not spending as much as when I would buy a new iPhone, $1,000 iPhone every five years, right? And I can't imagine that the resale value of a five-year-old iPhone is that high. I mean, I don't know, if someone knows, do the math and let me know in the comments but I think I would still be cheaper off here. Okay, guys, look, I know that a lot of people buy super expensive phones, thousand dollar phones, and I know for a fact that most of those people don't need a thousand dollar phone. You don't need it to scroll on Instagram and to scroll on Twitter and browse the internet and take a, a picture of a cat. It's just consumer society at its finest, but I mean, like I said, I don't care about what you do with your money. I only care what I do with my money. Yeah, let me know in the comments. If you have a thousand dollar phone, why did you buy that phone? And it doesn't matter what reason it is. I'm not judging you. I, I don't want to like, you know, all of that. No, no judging. But if it's a reason that can convince me that it justifies that huge price difference, then you get bonus points. 
don't take this video too seriously. Thank you so much for watching. I know I'm not. Thank you so much for watching and see you at the next one. Oh.